إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam I just wanted to leave a, a, a reminder inshallah for all of us to know with respect to the rulings relating to the sacrificial animals يعني باب في أحكام الأضحية the rulings related to the sacrificial animals, especially at this time as we enter the blessed month of Dhul Hijjah in the upcoming days. And the Udhiya, it refers to a legally edible grazing animal. It is the legally grazing animal that is sacrificed at home on the day of sacrifice, the day of Dhul Hijjah, the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, the day of Eid, or the days of Tashriq, the 11th, 12th, or the 13th day of Dhul Hijjah up until sunset, for the sake of attaining closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to His pleasure. And Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, offering a sacrificial animal for the sake of Allah the Creator is regarded as a sacrifice for one's own self, as one's self tends to fall into ruin by sinning. And this is true for all of us, all of Bani Adam, who is upon sin and disobedience, and sin and disobedience, that this is the way to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ جَعَلْنَا مَنْ سَكَنْ لِيَذْكُرُ إِسْمَ اللَّهِ عَلَى مَا رَزَقَهُمْ مِنْ بَهِيمَةِ الْأَنْعَامِ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in Surah Al-Hajj, And for every religious community, we have appointed a right of sacrifice that they may mention the name of Allah over what He has provided, provided for them of the sacrificial animals. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this right that is upon us as we enter the month of Dhul Hijjah has rulings and we should remember them. The sacrifice of the animals, the sheep or the goat, the camel or the cow, must be done after Eid al-Adha prayer, even if you pray it alone. It must be after the prayer, and it is to seek nearness to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an what means say O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indeed my prayer, my sacrifice, my living and my dying are for Allah the Lord of the worlds. La sharika lah. There is no one worthy of worship along with Allah. There is no associating partners with Allah. And this is what I have been commanded and I am the first to submit my will to Allah as a Muslim. Here this sacrifice refers to the slaughtering so as to seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And its ruling has an ob- obligation in the sunnah upon every Muslim household who is able to afford it. So it is definitely at the very least a sunnah mu'akkida, according to the scholars, an established sunnah that those who can afford should 100% do. And it is one sacrifice that will cover all of the people in the, aus- in the household. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَانْحَرْ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said what means, Therefore, turn in prayer to your Lord and sacrifice to Him. Why? To show thanks, to show gratitude. And from the importance and the merits of the udhiyah is that Allah mentions it with one of the foremost acts that were commanded, the prayer, as we just mentioned. To, and to please and to submit to Allah and show gratitude to Him. Show gratitude to Allah for His countless favors and to revive the great practice started by our Prophet Ibrahim salam, and to give food on the day of Eid to those who do not have a chance to have it. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من كان ذبح قبل صلاة الصلاة فليعد رواه بخاري ومسلم and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said anyone who offered a sacrifice before Eid prayer let him repeat it after Eid prayer and this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim so it has rulings and legislations we must be aware of. This year, we may be praying Eid in our homes. Again, like we did with Eid al-Fitr. So it's a ruling that the Eid prayer must be performed before you go and you sacrifice the animals. And again, it begins after the Eid prayer on the day of Eid, the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, until sunset on the days of Tashriq. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith that Ayyam al-Tashriq, 
ayyamu aklin wa shurubin wa dhikrillah that the days of tashriq are days of eating and drinking and dhikr remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah said wadhkuru Allah fi ayyamin ma'dudat to remember Allah on these appointed days so these are all venerable days that we should be very mindful of and we should know their importance from the wisdoms of the udhiyah as we said fasalli li rabbika wanhar to turn in prayer to your lord and sacrifice to him attaining nearness to Allah by doing what pleases him from what pleases Allah without a doubt is the prayer and also here the sacrifice that we make in reviving the sunnah of our prophet ibrahim alayhi salam wa fadaynahu bi dhibh azim to revive the sunnah of our prophet ibrahim alayhi salam who saw in a dream that he should sacrifice his son that he'd longed for that he was finally given that he should lay him on a table and sacrifice him and when he went to tell ismail of this dream alayhi salam prophet ismail alayhi salam said if al ma tu'mar satajiduni insha allah min as-sabirin he said do what allah has commanded you to do you will find me of those who are patient and when we, he was about to sacrifice his son allah told him this was a test and you have passed it and he replaced the sacrifice with that of a ram so we ransomed him ismail alayhi salam with a great sacrifice so we commemorate this at this time and revive the sunnah of our prophet ibrahim alayhi salam in showing generosity to the dependents mercy to the poor the needy on eid and showing gratitude to allah for all his favors for whatever he has given us from every breath we take to the animals and the food he's blessed us with this is what is done at this time my brothers and sisters in islam so there are some other regulations we should be aware of the age of the animal the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said to only slaughter a fully grown animal unless it is difficult for you qala rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam la tadbahu illa musinna illa an ya'sura alaykum فَتَذْبَحُوا جَذَعَةً مِنَ الضَّأْنِ وَالْمُسَنَّةُ, والمسنت مِنَ الْأَنْعَامِ هِيَ الثَّنِيَّةِ رواه مسلم The Prophet ﷺ, he said, only slaughter the fully grown animal unless it is difficult for you. And if it is difficult for you, you may slaughter a judu'a from the sheep, which is one that is, uh, we'll explain, is six months old. And the full grown animal, that is the Thaniya, or the uh, which is the thaniya. Okay, so here the animals which must, may be slaughtered on the day of Eid are the sheep, and this one, if it is difficult to find one one year old or older, then you can sacrifice one that is six months older, uh, six months or older. For the goat, it shouldn't be less than uh, a thaniya, which is one that has completed one year old and is entering its second year of life. The cow, which should have completed two years, entering therefore its third year of living, and the camel, which should have completed, um, uh, the, should, which should be five years old, insha'Allah. Okay, so it should, had, uh, yani, this is what should be done with respect to the ages of the animal. Also, the physical fitness, it should be free of any defects. This is a special sacrifice to Allah, so you want the best of animals. So it should be free of any natural defects. The Prophet ﷺ in this hadith in Sahih Muslim, he said there are four types of animals that are not permissible for sacrifice. They are the one-eyed animal. For example, an animal that has no sight in its other eye, or it is obviously uh, lost one eye, or the likes of this matter, you cannot sacrifice this one for the udhiyah. A sick animal which has an obvious illness, you can see it sick uh, in the way it's acting in, in its mannerisms. The lame animal which has an obvious limp, an animal which limps and is not perfect in the way it runs and walks, this is not eligible for sacrifice. And an old animal which has no marrow or it is extremely lean or extremely skinny. These animals are not befitting for the udhiya. And you must pick an animal which is perfect and good and fattened so that you have enough meat to feed yourself and the other people with. And trusting someone to perform it is something many people do. The sunnah without a doubt is to sacrifice the animal in your locale with your own hand. 
to lay the animal facing the qibla and to sacrifice it so the carotid and jugulars are slit and the animal does not suffer. Okay? If you do not do this or cannot do this, you can appoint someone, but the sunnah then is for you to at least witness it, to be able to take the meat, as we will see, and to divide it, okay, uh, accordingly as we will get to. Some of the ulama have said that if you're in a country where there's not too many needy people, and you know there's a need in other Muslim lands where the people are struggling, and especially in this time where we might find some difficulty because of the coronavirus and the restrictions, then it is okay inshallah, to send your money to a Muslim land if the person is entrusted and you know that they will say, Bismillah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahumma hadha minka wa laka, Allahumma hadha an fulan wa ali beto, and they would mention your name. So this is something that is permissible, inshallah, uh, especially in the, the times that we're in, bi'ibnillah, according to some of the statements of the scholars. But without a doubt, the best thing is to sacrifice here, and you can do extra sacrifices as sadaqah, as charity, especially in these holy days. But if you cannot, and you can only afford one, and you cannot sacrifice it, or you fear going out, then you can, inshallah, entrust somebody else to perform it for you. Dividing it up is recommended in three portions. As the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, Kulu wa wa tasaddaqu. Eat of it, store some of it, and distribute some of it as charity. So, yani, in this case, what is we find really recommended according to the scholars is to keep a third for your family and eat it. Give a third to friends and, and, and other members of your family who you uh, are close to and give a third out in charity. And give a third out in charity. Okay? Uh, one sheep is enough for all of the members of, the fam- of, of one family. So if you live in a family as a husband and wife, and you have seven children, and your mother and father live with you in the same house, for example, right? It is sufficient to sacrifice one animal for that household. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمْ هِلَالَ ذِي الْحِجَّةِ وَأَرَادَ أَحَدَكُمْ أَنْ يُضَحِّي فَلْيُمْسِكْ عَنْ شَعْرِهِ وَأَظْفَارِهِ حَتَّى يُضَحِّي رواه مسلم The Prophet ﷺ, he said that if you see the crescent moon of the Hijjah, for the month of Dhul Hijjah, and one of you intends to sacrifice an animal, he should refrain from removing his hairs and nails, and the scholars even mentioned removing any skin, okay, until he or she sacrifices the animal. So the one who cannot remove their hair or nails or skin is the one intending the sacrifice and paying the money. So let us just say it's the husband, the wife, the children, the parents living in the same house, they can cut their hair or cut their nails and the likes of this. It is the one who is intending the sacrifice with their wealth that is doing so. If the husband does it on behalf of the family and the wife wants to do one herself to get closeness to Allah and to thank Allah, then she should also refrain refrain from cutting hair and nails and skin, the likes of this matter, in that case, to uh, follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So this is an obligation, one per household, if you have enough wealth, if someone is poor and cannot afford it, then this is inshallah uh, okay for them not to do and it, the obligation is waived of them. In a hadith we have in the sunnah of Ibn Majah that Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah, he authenticated as Hassan. The Prophet sallallahu he said, مَنْ وَجَدَ سَعَةً لَأَنْ يُضَحِّي فَلَمْ يُضَحِّي فَلَا يَقْرَبَنَّ مُصَلَّانَ And our Prophet sallallahu he said, whoever has the means to slaughter, the capacity to sacrifice. They have the wealth and they could do so and they do not do so, they should not approach our musalla. They should not approach our musalla. So at the very least, this is a sunnah mu'akkada, a stressed sunnah. Those who can afford it should pay it. Again, one animal is sufficient per household. <clears throat> From the other rulings that we remind you with, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is that the Animal should be purchased and bought with halal earnings. And of course, there should be sincerity, ikhlas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this animal, uh, yani that you're doing this to get closeness to Allah and earn forgiveness for your sins. Another reminder that we should mention at this time is that before sunset on the first night of Dhul Hijjah, which this year coincides with Tuesday, July 21st, that night, 
the sunset, the first day being Wednesday, July 22nd, but it begins the night before. So before sunset, Tuesday, July 22nd, one should do any trimming of their hair or their nails that they have to do. So we remind each other of the fitrah. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, five acts are from the traits of the fitrah and they should be remi- reminded of. Al-Khitan, circumcision. Al-Istihdad, the uh, removal of the uh, pubic hairs in the private region. This should be done if you have to do it. You cannot go longer than 40 days without removing the hair in the pubic region for the male and the female. And if someone was going to do this, they should do it if they're intending the sacrifice before sunset on the first night of Dhul Hijjah. Taqlim al Avafir is from the acts of the fitrah, the natural acts of purity and cleanliness to cut the fingernails and the toenails. Again, you cannot go more than 40 days of this. You should do it before the night of Dhul Hijjah, uh, the first of Dhul Hijjah, before sunset on the night of the first of Dhul Hijjah. Again, for the one intending the sacrifice. Wanatuf al Ibt, this is to pluck or remove the hairs under the arm, the armpit hairs. Again, if you have not done this and you're approaching 40 days, you should do this before sunset on the 21st of July for 2020, this year, um, before the days of the Hijjah starts. Again, if you intend to sacrifice, it's the one paying it forward who has to refrain and stay away from thing, these things. And lastly, وَقَصْرُ sharib and the trimming of the mustache. Not removing it all, but trimming it so it is above the lip and it is يعني, relatively short. This should be done. So we remind you of this because many people enter the 10 days of the Hijjah. They're intending to offer a sacrifice and they go, oh no, I haven't uh, trimmed my nails or my cut my nails or my armpit hairs and it's been 40 days and now you're in a little dilemma. So inshallah, these are things, my brothers and sisters, that we want to remind each other with. At this time, these are some actions relating to the Udhiyah, the sacrifice. Uh, if anything I said was incorrect, I beg forgiveness from Allah. It is from me and Shaytan. Anything good I said is by Allah's permission. If you have any questions, never hesitate to reach out. But we should do things in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of our Messenger Wasallam, and with ikhlas, with sincerity, so that our deeds may be accepted. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, wa shahadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.